Hey writers, I love talking to authors who've taken an unconventional path to publishing. And today, Christine Ray Nabal shares with us how the pursuit of a degree in animal science led to children's books that fill in learning gaps for kids. Christine shares her journey from working with a vanity press all the way through to how she created her own publishing company. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Writer's Way podcast. I'm here with the fantastic Christine Reinebo. Thank you so much for joining me, Christine. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Happy to have you. I'm so excited to talk to you. It's like, where do we start? Lots to talk about. We're going to hear a door. Okay. Um, why don't we start with a bit about your background? So how you got started with children's books and then where you are now? Yeah, it's actually... Um, probably the least logical route to being a published children's author that most people would think of. Um, but I went to school for a degree in animal science. Um, so I always like to tell people and I get questions in interviews about um, why I have the degree I have. <laughs> and uh, I always like to tell people it's the best degree you can get to be a butcher. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't have what I wanted at the time. Um, but I wanted to train service dogs. And in that whole process, I ended up with a internship and a part-time job. And the internship was working with wildlife and rescuing them. And the intern or and the part-time job was working with teenagers. Oh. And the teenagers won. <laughs> and so midway through college, I didn't want to stay in college forever. So I started just focusing on my job and really building up my career, um, have been in youth development for over 10 years now. And in working with teens for all of those years, I started seeing patterns of lessons that weren't making it to kids. So that's where the inspiration behind each book comes from is gaps in what we're teaching kids. Um, and then actually starting the publishing process, um, I was 23 years old and angry at where I was at in life um, because what 23 year old isn't right and I had this like long list I got this letter from a teacher from my senior year of high school and it was a letter to yourself five years from now and I was that silly 17 year old who was like you're going to have gone to Australia published a children's book and you're going to be you know starting a career all by the ripe age of 20 of course. <laughs> I was like... You, you gave yourself three years to get to Australia and back? And I gave myself, yeah, like the whole whopping like short amount of time, two years to get there. And um, jo so jokes on all of us young people who are like, I know what it's like to be 20. And then you get there and you're like, okay. So I, I hadn't done anything. Off of the, I had done one thing off the list. I made it to Australia. Oh, yay. But that only made me more disappointed at where I was at in life. And I saw a published author in there, and I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. And I started submitting my first book to a bunch of publishers. I had two publishers who reached out to me um, and said, we want to publish you. Um, I went with the one that was cheaper, um, and lo and behold, I got looped in with a vanity press. Um, so for any people in the writing world, a vanity press is not an author's friend. Um, so that is how I got started. And then the rest, I mean, do you want me to go into the rest of it? <laughs> yes, keep going. Okay. Right. So from there, um, I stuck with my vanity press for three years. I published two books. Um, the first one came out in 2014. That was PB&J. The second one was Guts in 2016. Um, from there, I then um, took the next step and I took time off because with guts, I actually ran into so many challenges. I almost quit. Oh. Um, I, I was like, this is dumb. I, I was not cut out for this. Was um, it because of the publisher or was it like selling the book or what? Were um, it was the industry. It was book festivals. It was the publisher. I mean, 
if you can think of a, a challenge that a new author who this is not necessarily their expertise to be in the publishing industry, you can think of a, an obstacle you could put in front of them. I hit them all. Oh. Um, and I, I very distinctly remember a day at my sister's house sitting there and being like, I lost hundreds of dollars trying to grow my books. Mm -hmm. Hundreds. And I didn't have hundreds to lose. Mm -hmm. I work with kids, remember? They don't pay people who work with kids. <laughs> And so I, I was devastated and I was hurt. I was down and I was lucky enough to have her and have her say, here's the deal. One more try. So let's go. We're going to go look what, what, who can we reach out to? Where we, can we get you connected? What's the next thing we can try? And she sat down at the computer and started pulling up all these ideas. She goes, you got to give it one more try. Aww. And that next try did not work. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. everybody's waiting for the like yeah the and then rainbow like, and unicorn no yeah no I actually didn't do anything for the next year oh. um but I sat on it long enough and I kept talking to people about how like at a certain point if I'm doing all of this work mm -hmm. why not just do it for myself then I get the message I want every day of the week then I get the control and I get the transparency that I want and then who knows maybe I can grow it into something bigger yeah yeah crazy ideas right um so then it was March of 2017 that I waited until like 11 o'clock at night and a glass of wine and I was like I'm filing for an EIN boom and and luckily the IRS doesn't let you do that probably <laughs> because everybody who's doing that had a glass of wine um, <laughs> So then I woke up in the morning and on my way into work, I stopped at my computer and I sat down, refilled out the form. And to me, that was that moment of like, yeah, I wanted it when I was drinking wine, but I still wanted it the next morning. Right. Um, filed the EIN. And then I have been functioning as Dream Built Books ever since. Um, in the first year as Dream Built Books, I published two more books. Mm -hmm. Um sold more books in the one year than I did in the three years prior. And then um, this last year I published one more book, so I'm up to five now. Yeah. And then the exciting thing that hasn't really been officially announced yet, but is coming is I will be publishing another author for the first time this Yay. year. Okay. And that's all planned and in the works? It's in the works. Yes. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So was it like, I put all this time and effort in, I have this knowledge now, I'm going to reach out to other authors, or did somebody come to you? Somebody came to me. She met me at um, Untitled Book Festival, Untitled Town Book Festival in Green Bay. Okay. Um, and she started talking to me, asked if I would ever consider publishing someone else, and I was like, I mean, sure. <laughs> Why not, right? Um I only have a couple things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. so um, yeah I mean we just started talking about it and the reality is I was very honest with her probably more honest than I should be um, I tend to be a little bit more honest than I should be uh, so I told her like I've never done this before <laughs> I'm gonna make a mistake at least at least a couple times yeah. you're gonna have to count on that um, I'm yeah small i don't have you know a million dollars to give you an advance i'm not some proven track record of ten thousand sales a year but i will promote your book i will invest in you i will help you out along the way like this will be a partnership and if you can invest in the idea of a partnership we can do this together nice yeah really, yes that really hits home for me because i've pretty much done the same thing I wasn't, it was sort of on my mind. It's like, once you learn the business side of this, you have that knowledge and you want to do it more. I think some of us anyway, we want to keep doing it. Well, and for me, it was like, I just want one more person to not stumble as many times as I did. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Use the knowledge that you have gained. Yeah. The hard way, but you've got it now. And, right. And so how do, you know, I'm still going to keep learning. There's still so many things for me to learn, but if I can help one person to not stumble mm -hmm. and trip and fall and almost give up the way I did, like I did it and won. <laughs> You've won. Oh, I love it. Yeah. There's a lot of ups and downs. Absolutely. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you have advice for somebody who wants to skip that first few years that you went through, self-publish themselves. Um, self-publish themselves, <laughs> that's uh, redundant. Anyway, um, what would you say? Ooh, um, so many things. Um, I think the first thing I would say is you bet know your intent. You know, so if you, if you're committed to the work, do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're going into this thinking you're going to become a best-selling author tomorrow because it got listed on Amazon, if you think that it's going to be an, a whole smooth ride all the way along, go find a publisher, a real publisher, or just keep writing your hobby. Mm -hmm. It's very doable for anybody to be in the spot that I'm in today. I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But it's hard. <laughs> and it, it takes passion to keep going. Because when you hit those roadblocks, you got to be able to say, like, I, I still want it bad enough. I still have a story to tell, and I still have a story that needs to make it to a bookshelf. Mm -hmm. So make sure your intent and what you're willing to endure matches. <laughs> You make it sound so grueling. <laughs> You've had a tough time. I, well, and I think the hard part is it's not always. Right. But like, that's a real part of it. Yeah. Um, the industry is not author friendly anymore. And, and it, I don't think so. And it's super not um, indie author friendly. Uh, they, there are plenty of people who will tell you, you must go the traditional route and or don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's too much information out there for that to be the real answer. Yeah, um, indie publishing is totally an option. Um, and vanity presses are going to take your money. <laughs> and you're still going to do all the same work as a self-published author. There, there's very little help you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And and that's one of those real, I mean, I, I could sugarcoat it and say, like, do it. The resources are there. You'll be ha You'll have fun with it. It'll be great. But that part isn't the part that people need to know. <laughs> the, that is fun. And you get to do your author event and the best moment you'll ever have is that first time a kid walks up to you and is like, oh my gosh, I love this book. And you're like, oh my God, me too. <laughs> and you're the celebrity. <laughs> yeah. 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 When people want your signature on their book and you're like, I'm, well, okay. <laughs> Those are the wins. Those are the wins, but you're going to get that no matter where you go in terms of publishing. If you're going to self-publish, you have to be ready for some struggles and you have to be willing to ask for help when you hit them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yes. You have to have that uh, determination for sure. Yeah. And there's lots of resources if you're willing to ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for help. Cause there's a lot, I feel like it's a friendly community if you find the right spots. Like yes. I have, I've found a couple of really good Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. that are all about helping and lifting each other up and not about keeping information quiet or um, putting people down or all self-promo and that. So I find that that really helps just to have that. Yes. Time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm involved in probably like seven or eight. Yeah. And I can identify the one right now where there's a lot of self-promotion and a lot of like, this is the route you go. <laughs> right. And I find myself being that person who's commenting on the same post being like, actually, there are other ways. Um, it's not going to be necessarily that way, and it's not necessarily going to be the smoothest way, but this is the way you could go, and this is free, yeah. or this is time-saving. Because <laughs> that's the other piece is usually, I mean, there are the people who are going to do this, and this is their hobby, their full-time job, whatever. If you're like me, you're also still working your full-time job you still have a relationship you need to take care of. I volunteer for four different organizations. Oh my goodness. Like there's, there's still life outside of being an author. How do you fit that in? Is there? <laughs> Is there? It's hard, eh? It's something when you're super passionate about something and it takes a lot of effort, then it really does have the tendency to consume your thoughts and your world. So I like how you say that you need to pay attention to the outside world and your relationship in particular, or more than one, should you have more than one, you need to, you need to turn it off and go yeah. real, live a real life because that's yeah. a lesson I think I've learned the hard way <laughs> because yeah. 
Well, and like those people in your real life, whew, they are going to be a lifesaver when you need people to go give you reviews and, yeah. and, and make sure it's the people who are going to give you honest reviews. Yeah. I know plenty of people who don't believe in that, but I want somebody on my team who's going to tell me when something sounds stupid. Oh no, I agree with that completely. Yeah. I've had people tell me not to. Um, not to ask for honest reviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If because you a, if you have a couple that don't sound like they're blowing smoke, you know, um, it's, it's legitimate. It makes it all much more legitimate. So, well, and you learn from the, the feedback. <laughs> yeah. If you can handle reading some of them, <laughs> some of them are always a little bit harsh, but yeah, yeah absolutely. I agree with you. So what's next for you? That new book in 2020, that's a secret. That one's actually still this year yet. Okay. So it's about to be like not a secret. Like this Oh, like week. this year. Oh, okay. So I thought I had read on your website, there was one in 2020. So is that one yours? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. There so is. Um, I, I will have more books coming out personally as well. Yes. Um, the theme is not announced yet. Okay. <laughs> But sorry, yes, I will have my own next book coming out. Okay, and is it, is it another one that like you're sticking with that pattern of filling in gaps? You feel like yeah, missed out on. And can you share about the author you're publishing, or is that you said that's coming soon? Do you want to give us? I a wish bit? I, I wish I could, but I can't. So I guess this is one of those social media plugs of like follow me, <laughs> follow me. That's where you'll find it out on Facebook or on Instagram. Okay, um, go for it. Share where people can follow you. Yeah, if you follow me at Dream Built Books at either location, that's all you got to type in. I made it real simple for everyone. Perfect. Love it. Thank you. Any parting words for people? N no, um, I guess. So, I mean, yes. Um, I guess if, if this is something you're listening and you're thinking, I want to make this happen in some way, um, there is a way. <laughs> Okay. Whether it's the self-publishing, whether it's traditional publishing, whether you choose, you do want to go with a vanity press. Right. Um, and I'm going to throw in indie publishing because I actually think indie publishing is a very different thing than all three of those. Um, so what? How so? Um, so I think indie publishing is the intent of self-publishing versus indie publishing is very different. So, and the intent of indie publishing versus vanity publishing is different as well. Those are different, yes. So, um, and that's where I'm, I'm sliding in with my new book that I'm working with, not my book, my new author that I'm going to work with. Okay. Um, because there is a way to give an advance and it doesn't have to be crazy. And there is a way to give support and to teach and give some of those aspects of traditional publishing without going overboard. Mm -hmm. There is a way to be a partner in the process, not just take money. <laughs> and there is a way to put some onus back on the author to do their own work mm -hmm. while also doing work alongside them. Okay. So to me, what I'm trying to do is looking at indie publishing and saying, can't it be all three? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, creating, because traditionally you have to go get a, um, an agent Vanity, you don't. So where do you land in between on all of those different pieces to make it accessible, affordable, helpful? Right. Yeah. Successful, hopefully. Hopefully successful, yeah. So, so yeah, I actually do believe that there are the four different categories. Okay. Um, and so within one of the four, there's someone to help every person uh -huh. that yeah. it's doable. It's doable. And there isn't only one way. You just have to find what works for you. Depending on yeah. And know what works for you. Be honest about what you want. Be honest about what you want and how much time you are willing to spend and how much effort yeah. learning new things. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Christine. I really appreciate you coming on. I wish you and your author the best of luck. Thank you. I look forward to continuing to work with you as well and like see how everything progress for you. Yes, I'm super excited. Yeah. <laughs> so many things. Thank you. Okay, well, say goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening today, writers. How many of you feel Christine's pain and have had bad experiences with vanity presses that you want to share about? Tell, tell me about it in the comments and remember to subscribe to the show. Talk to you next week here on the Writer's Way podcast.